Hi everybody, I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the streeters. streeters. Welcome to the RDRV live stream tonight. The Q&A and Ed has a demo. Hope and, everybody's uh, doing last well. chat for you. Hope everyone is doing well and you're ready for Thanksgiving. Happy I'm Thanksgiving. ready. I'm ready. I'm getting ready. I'm almost ready. <laughs> we're working <Excited>. on it. <laughs> yeah, we're excited. We hope yeah. everyone's doing well. Our friends up in the great white north, God bless you today, y'all, after this weekend. <laughs> that was uh, quite the snowstorm you had. Yes, yeah, so speaking of snowstorms, um, the live stream is sponsored by Sunshine Oh, that's right, Glass Sunshine Works. Glass in Buffalo, where they got seven foot of snow this weekend. Holy cow. Yeah. So a big shout out to Sunshine Glass Works, and we want to thank them for being a sponsor of the RDRV live stream every Monday night. At 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock. So don't forget, Sunshine has over 15 different colors and varieties of, 1,500 varieties and colors of glass in, in their shop. So, they sure do. Along with everything else you need to pr produce work. so Yeah. They should be digging themselves out pretty soon. Yeah. But, uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to you guys up there in Buffalo, in that area, because that's... Uh, Syracuse, pretty... Rome, yeah, Rome Utica, all those places just got slammed. That's a lot slammed. of snow. Yeah, it is. Well, hey, welcome everybody tonight to the RDRV channel. And if you have a question, go ahead and just... Just put a Q in front of it, and uh, that way Barb will know that it is a question. And uh, it, you don't even have to put a Q in front of it if you just want to say yeah, hi. So. Please, yeah, please put a Q if you have a question, and we'll be happy to answer. Uh, Jennifer has a question. Great. She, wanted to, she wants to know what should she look for in choosing the right size of lead cane? What what are you know? What are the things she should look for? Well, you want to try to always buy the number two or what's called the high heart because that allows you to use different textures of glass as well, or thicker glasses. Uh, you still may have to grind the edge on a textured glass, but what you want to look for for your lead is really the size of the window that you're building. You know, most leads, most windows can be built out of three sixteenths or seven thirty second lead. But when you get larger, you need to go with a quarter inch H round or even a quarter inch H flat to give you two things. To give you that decorative look that you want in the window, use a smaller profile lead for detail. And also you're going to need a way to, if you use a heavy lead, you need to, that'll allow you to attach your reinforcing rods correctly and not worry about them coming off when they expand in the heat and everything. So you want to try, you know, basically the answer to your question is to use a profile that fits the size of the window. That's usually the best, the best way. I keep, I keep three eighths flat H in stock, which because I use it on the outside of everything. Uh, church windows are built with three eighths flat H because they have to be reinforced about every 16 inches or so. Also, uh, I like to keep 3 16 Like the panel I'm working on now is a little transom glass. Anything any fatter would not have done the window justice. It would have looked too bulky looking, don't you think, Barb? Absolutely. Yeah, so I hope yeah. that helps you out. Yeah, it's always nice to have a couple several different. different sizes yeah. depending on what you're doing. Just and different how you profiles. Want that profile, how you want that window to look. Yeah, because, you know, they make lead all the way down to 532nd, which is just a little bit thicker than an eighth of an inch as far as the uh, width, the profile looking down at it. And then, then, of course, they go all the way up to three-quarter inch flat H. Uh, we've we've even had half-inch round H in this in our studio using it for projects. So. Mm -hmm. That's a heavy piece of lead, y'all, half-inch round H. <laughs> Uh, Jen wants to know, what do you prefer working on, lead cane or copper foil? I prefer doing lead cane work, but I do a lot of repair work, and most of that's copper foil work. So, um, but I would, I prefer to do, I prefer to do lead work, just because of the size projects that we do. So, I, I enjoy doing lead. And uh, Pauline asked a question, but I want to get back to that in a minute, Pauline, so just hang on there, okay? <laughs> um, uh, Kathy Cat, you know, let's see. Let's go to Jen's question first, because it kind of goes along with what you're uh, talking about. Okay. Um, she's working on a 24 by 16 oval window, and she's wondering if she should do it in lead came or copper foil. 
A twenty. It depends if if it, okay. is it going in a door, a frame, or a frame. So if it's if it's going in a door, I would do lead came and just drop down to a small lead came. Uh, three sixteenths would probably be okay in that size of a window. Uh, the other thing is, is if it's just going in a frame, you probably want to go ahead and do it out of copper foil so that it fits in the frame correctly. You don't have a big headache trying to get it, uh, putting your push points in and everything. So really it's going to depend. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's your call as the artist. How about that? But um, if it's going to go in a frame, I would just do uh, the copper foil because it'll probably be much quicker for you. Yeah, and if you're going to do it in lead, you definitely would have to have a wood frame for it because you're not going to be able to. Not hang in an oval. The, you can't hang it in you an can't hang yeah. it from ovals, the lead. Ovals, ovals don't hang well with lead. They don't really hang well with copper foil either, but. If you'll remember to reinforce the entire perimeter of that and then uh, insert your hangers and make sure that the wires on your um, on your jump rings go down into the window so that they're pulling on the window, not just the outside edge. Yeah, ovals and circles are tricky because you've got to think about the frame before you, you know, you really got to think about what kind of frame you're going to use. Yeah, and round frames are available. Oval frames are like few and far between. So usually custom. Yeah, usually custom. But yeah. You know, and you know, there's a lot of really good wood woodworkers out there that also work in stained glass, and there's some right here on our channel too. So it may be you could hook up with somebody that would build you an oval frame if you needed it. So, uh, Kath Cat wants to know: Could you tell us the different thicknesses of glass? How many are there? Well, okay. quick, boom, all right, here we go. So go the, your different thicknesses of glass, you're going to start out with th uh, with 330, uh, 330 seconds in this country. 330 seconds um, is going to be your picture frame glass. Your next thickness up is going to be 1 8 and everybody calls that DSB or double strength glass. Then it goes from that's there. That's like your window glass. That's your window pane glass. Your picture frame glass is 332nd. Your window pane glass is 8th inch. Now you're going to move up to some of your glazing uh, requires 316th glass. Then when from 316th, you go over to 1 quarter inch, which is going to be uh, protective furniture tops for like your nightstands, your dressers, things like that. That's where you use the quarter inch. So 516th used to be available. It's made overseas now see it every now and then but not very often so we jump from quarter inch in this country up to three eighths then from three eighths we go to half once you reach half inch glass all the edges when they're cut have to be machined or polished because of the way that they break then you go up you leave a half inch go into five eighths again it has to be machined then three quarter and uh three quarter inch glass is what you see architecturally in um, vestibules, uh, libraries, things like that. And they really stretch the limits in California and New York on these glasses as far as their structural integrity. So they have all these different spiders and every, everything stainless and shiny. Holes are drilled. But you know what? It makes an entire vestibule. It, uh, when we were in San Jose, we saw the entire library was done. The entire library was completed out of three quarter inch glass, tempered safety glass, and then uh, was all held together with spiders. I mean, even the doors. The doors well, were swinging on everything. How about the Corning, the new museum? Yeah, the that new the, the, the new museum has some of the biggest glass that I've ever seen. And I have, y'all, in my 43 years of working in glass, I've set some really big glass where, like, where we had to use cranes to set it. And this glass that was in Corning in the new museum... Um, guess what? I guarantee you they used cranes to set that. This was uh, probably three-eighths or even half-inch tempered safety glass. And it was probably in excess of 140 inches long and probably at least 168 tall, which would have been 14 feet. Incredibly beautiful big glass inside the Contemporary Glass Museum at Corning. What a, what a great... You know me, I don't just look at 
some things, but I, I always look at the architectural end of the glass too, because I, I'm still quite interested in that. But the, these architects that are working with glass now, they are stretching the boundaries of, it, of this product and um, growing by leaps and bounds. So it's really, it's really, uh, and they, they, you know, they do make glass one inch. One inch glass is, is, is colored glass and it's castable, okay? Uh, Wismac makes it and it's also used, one inch thick glass is used in faceted glass or faceted stained glass windows that are uh, epoxy resin windows. So anyway, so you can get up, you can get up even thicker. I mean, uh, I'm not exactly sure the thickness of the Hubble telescope, but it took it uh, over a year to anneal. And um, part we saw part of it at the uh, corn in Corning, what the first one that cracked, the first lens yes, that cracked. Yes, they so have it on and it was about it was about fourteen in inches thick. Museum shop, I think. Yeah, in the display. museum shop. So the first the first lens that cracked is on display, encased in this huge steel frame hanging in the ceiling in the Corning Museum gift shop. So check it out, and it, it's really um, it was an incredible sight. I wasn't expecting to see it, and uh, you know I've kind of fun thing to say yeah it is and we we actually have a customer whose son works on that project so interesting uh jennifer wants to know do you still use h shape lead cane when you aren't going to frame the piece she's trying to see if she should use you for the outside of a larger sun catcher for larger a, a sun catcher you need to just use the u okay yeah. The, the reason I use a flat H on the outside of my windows is because I'm always bumping into working into a building that's way old and nothing's square. And that, that 3 8 flat H allows me to leave the window in check and just work on the edges to make it fit in that frame. So that's the reason I use that. It's not, it's not because I have to. It's because... It's, you know, really it's a habit, isn't it? Where mm -hmm. I started using it a long time ago. You know, in the community that we live in, we've restored most of the churches in the downtown area. And those, uh, a lot of the windows in the fellowship halls that used to be the sanctuaries are, I, I noticed after restoring quite a few of them, that the actually the outside border of these windows was installed on the job because each sash in the window frame is different only by a quarter of an inch or uh, some of them are, were a half inch but you can tell that the uh, and all of the di all the borders were different outside border was might have been an inch and a half some of them were an inch and a quarter some of them were even an inch and three eighths yeah it was very different that remember? was for a reason because the windows were handmade and you never knew the sashes were handmade that, that's what yeah. I mean the sashes were handmade and you never knew when you got to the job if they were going yeah, to Yeah, so what so they, they did is they built the, the, the window, everything but the outside border. And then when they got to the job, they added it and then installed it in the window. And I've had, y'all, I've had these. 1800s, right? Like, 1890s. Late 1890s. So 1890, right at the turn of the century, you know. Uh, um, so if, if you take those, those things into consideration where the sashes were made, and it's so beautiful to be digging into these windows, y'all, to see this. Uh, and to see the talented uh, workers that worked for these companies that did these windows back at the turn of the century. So uh, it's it's really, I consider it an, an honor to be able to work on them. So. And they're so beautiful. Oh, they are. Okay, so uh, that was a good question, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, Kat St. Jane says, asks, how long does it take for the putty recipe to set up? Our putty recipe. Um, well, it, it doesn't. Well, it, it sets up, but once what you need to do is clean. Go ahead and clean it, polish it, and then let it let it uh, let it do its thing. It should just be it. The lacquer thinner should evaporate within a few hours. Uh, every time you flip the window over and polish it on one side to the other, you're going to continue to ooze the putty out. So what you need to do is get it cleaned up set it up and let it dry and uh, uh, you know you can lay it flat and let it dry but you just have to make sure that you keep the the other side that side that's down you're going to have to clean it because gravity is going to pull 
the glass down into the lead and the putty's going to ooze a little bit but you may have to clean it well you will have to clean it more than once just to get it you know perfect yeah clean it one day yeah. and then but I, and i learned a long time ago clean it and leave it alone quit fooling with it because you're going to create more work for yourself yeah and then you can just do a quick clean before you head to the yeah truck. just a quick polish I, I usually the quick polish for us is on the truck right before we install the window yeah. so it always needs rattling on the way dust gets bouncing up and down <laughs> you know but yeah so the putty recipe um and again y'all it's uh you know you don't want to make that putty recipe like really fluid because it should be the consistency of uh chocolate pudding yeah <laughs> and if it's too soupy just take the lid off and let it sit let the it. yes let it sit for three or four hours and that lacquer thinner <laughs> will evaporate and it'll become uh thicker so. Yeah. Uh, Patricia wants to know, I clean my glass with Dawn and baking soda. When I put on the black patina, it's nice and black. But when I polish it, the black still rubs off. Am I using the wrong polish? Um, you just use a wax, a car, a non-abrasive soft car wax. And you're using a soft cloth? Yeah, Patricia, like a t-shirt, old t-shirt. Don't t -shirt. use anything abrasive. Yeah, you want to just use an old t-shirt, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of the putty, I mean, some of the, the it's going to come off because all you're doing is tinting the surface of it because the solder really, if you look at it when you're done with it, it doesn't have any pores. So it's not absorbing it. It's actually tinting or patining the surface of it. And it does look good. So when you're done cleaning it and everything, you should end up with a dark pewter look instead of black. And that's probably what you're getting. So. Um. Oh, hey, Ray. <laughs> good to see you. I know yeah. you're out there, buddy. I just, y'all, we need to give Ray a big thumbs up for taking care of the channel tonight. Ray, you're our moderator. We love you. And hope, hope, buddy, that your driveway is not too full of snow. Yeah. And you guys can get around a little bit. It maybe not come down that that uh, that far south. So, oh, let's see. Burnt roll toast. Best way to mark your sand, uh, sanding lines, uh, I guess, for grinding. Do you think scoring a line with a metal point on top of a sharpie line is worth trying? I. You know what? If you're gonna if for using a saw, burnt red, burnt raw toast. If you're going to use a saw, yeah, um, somebody last week said a, gave it had a good idea. You take your sharpie and mark your line, and then you put a um, chapstick over top of it and give it a wax coating and seal it. And then apparently, your uh, it doesn't leave the pattern. But uh, I would if if I was going to use a saw to have to cut my pieces. I don't know if I would score it because if you're going to score it, you might as well just cut it by hand. Um, but you do need to be able to see it. So you could, I would prefer if I was going to use a saw, I would score the glass. That way I know it's not going to leave it. And I, there's no way possible that I can make it run by using a saw with water on it. You just can't do it. It's not going to get hot enough to break. So just mark it or use a Dremel. You can use a Dremel and mark it. Every, everybody has their own little technique. I would prefer myself, if I used a saw, uh, I would score the glass and then put it to the saw. Because it's kind of the same thing as using a, um, uh, what kind of, a scroll saw, all right? You have to mark the wood to use the scroll saw. And a lot of times you don't want to mark it with a pencil. A lot of times what I did when I was little is I would actually burn the design into the perimeter and then cut the design out of the with the scroll saw that way. So yeah, scratching it using some sort of a Dremel, scoring it uh, either any way that you want to do it. The whole idea is to keep it so that you can see the line to cut the pattern. So any and any way, any way that you can do that is a good way. Um. Pauline wants to know, which windows do you enjoy the most? Modern, uh, the old, or the unusual? I think I enjoy the old windows because I like to date when I'm digging into them. I like to see the craftsmanship. And I've seen some things that, uh, some glass that's been cut 
way before they even thought about saws and electricity. So, um, you know, that's why I'm still a big fan of, of not using a saw. However, like I told y'all, I am getting one. Maybe Santa's going to bring me one or something. But uh, we're going to get a saw, so we're moving into the 21st century. <laughs> Santa, did you hear that? Santa! Oh, Santa. All right, I'm not going to sing for y'all tonight. Oh, that's good. That's okay. okay. <laughs> uh, Tom said he bought, he priced an oval frame, and it was over $300. Yeah, oval, you know, you, you know how much wood you waste uh, doing He's an getting oval. ready to make one, so he'll find out. Yeah, you're gonna, if you're going to make one, Todd, you know, Tom, you, Tom Sharp. Well, he can find it other Tom uses. Sharp is the uh, is our subscriber that I told you uh, many of you are woodworkers. Well, Tom Sharp is a woodworker, and um, so yeah, you're going to find out just how much wood gets wasted on an oval. You know, the thing about it is that you can you can uh, biscuit joint an oval together and make the entire oval all out of a one by 12. And it's just a matter of getting that radius just right and cutting those strips and, and you know doing all the biscuit joints and glue and all that stuff. But I'm gonna tell you, ovals are tough y'all. And if you price an oval, whether you're using a frame or putting it in the door, make sure you charge accordingly because an oval is much more difficult to put together and number one, make it look right than a circle okay so when you're putting it when you're building an oval stained glass window it's going to take a lot longer because it has to look it's supposed to look like an oval when it's completed y'all uh barry says uh i am almost finished with a 56 by 48 inch window for their his dining room should he put a metal reinforcement for absolutely it? sir i would uh, if it's 53 tall i would use at least three horizontals uh, in it and then make sure when you put your molding against it that you notch the molding to go around the rebar so that now the molding is holding the window up from the rebar and it's not you know it's not going to deviate from that at all it's that's what the rebars are designed for and yeah you might not like the horizontal lines and and again I had somebody one of our customers do we really need to put those reinforcing rods in it? Well, if we don't, I won't warranty the window. So, yes, we have to put them in there because not is it that it's required, but aesthetically it needs to be there. And for me to be able to warranty the window and guarantee it's not going to roll out of the hole, out of the opening, yes, the reinforcing needs to be there, please. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but for you, yeah, go ahead. Do your reinforcing rod. If you, even if you need to bend it to make it look the way you want, it's okay. Heat it with a handheld torch, put it in the vise, and bend it. And But you want to make sure that you bend it so that it's not under stress on the lead, okay? Um, Pauline had a question. Okay, Pauline, go. Pauline wants to know what part of the turkey you like or do you eat ham? The piece that comes over the fence last. <laughs> Get out of here. You know that big piece of skin on the back oh, after you <laughs> stuff the turkey? Then you then you He's stuff lying. that you stuff He's that piece lying. of skin on the very back. He's lying. And you know that thing comes out so pretty and crispy. That's my kind of I like the skin on the turkey, but no. I would prefer um I prefer um, turkey breast, but and Barbara will, te Barbara will tell you this. My very favorite three flavors together are this as follows. Ham, green beans, and sweet potatoes. Those three flavors together, y'all, make me cry. They're so good. That's one of my favorite meals together, so... And that wasn't even the question. So you got no, but I, I do like Pauline. ham, but I like turkey. But that part that goes over the fence last is the first part that comes off the turkey when he comes out. Okay. Uh, Jen has a question. Is it about turkey? <laughs> uh, she, she's thinking about adding a decorative clear border around an oval to make it a rectangle. Uh, running out of time for this Christmas gift. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought that was a question. Yeah, that's a great idea. Do it. There's no problem. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because if you're trying to build a frame for an oval, you know, Tom's busy building his frame, but 
I don't think he'd have time to build you one for Christmas either. So yeah, I would take that, turn it into a rectangle, get your wood out. Julie Studio said that's called the Parsons nose. Is that? I have no idea. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. I just thought it was the end that went over the fence last. Pauline said that she took you for a cranberry sauce guy. Well, you know, I do like cranberry sauce, but uh, I I do uh, turkey. And you know something else I like? I like my I like um, I like my corn or my peas mixed with my potatoes. That's just old school. So I guess I used to eat that when I was a kid. But I don't know. My mom was feeding me venison when I was three months old, so who knows? <laughs> um, ah! You got all the love you needed. I got all the love I needed when I needed it. <laughs> when you needed it. I got loving when I needed it and only when I needed it. Okay. Burnt Wild Toast <laughs> wants to know. Um, he's having a hard time keeping his lines accurate while sanding. Uh, he's tracing onto a manila from a manila envelope stencil to the glass via sharpie so is that the preferred way to do it in copper foil um yeah you should i mean you have to trace it onto you have to trace your pattern onto the glass um something that you can do is just use like a a, if you're having problem with your pattern moving under your fingers just use a little uh, glue stick and just kind of hit that set it on there and then trace around it um if yeah you're not going to get the tracing just perfect but you know what you got the pattern right there and you and you see where your lines are so i would uh just trace it the best way that you can i use a light box for pretty much everything <clears throat> including copper foil so and i don't i don't know an easy way to do that But I do use a manila folder because I don't like having to redo the pattern. Once I'm done with my pattern and it's on that manila folder, it goes into an envelope. So I hope that helps you because it's really, you know, getting your pattern right is, is, uh, if you don't get it right before you cut it, it's not going to be right after you cut it. And then you need your pattern right there on the table so you can take it from your grinder. I think that he's using a sander instead of a grinder. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, so if you're using a sander, um, my my thoughts on that would be to just become really, really proficient at cutting glass. And then eventually you won't even need a grinder. Um, you can use that sander to rough up the edges so that the foil will stick. But um, just just make yourself really proficient at, uh, at cutting glass so that you won't have to worry about it. I understand you're using a sander. I, that's right. I heard that word instead of a grinder. So Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tom said contacted if he's a spray on the uh pattern yeah a lot of people do that and yeah that is very helpful and then have your other pattern right there next to it so you can take it from the sander and onto your pattern right and your, of course your protect it pattern right protect it with something right but do y'all and I'm a, I'm a stickler for this do get as proficient as you can at cutting your glass Okay. It's really, you know, it's really helpful. Like when you're putting stuff together, um, because I use a light box, it makes me cut my glass right. Otherwise, when I get to the table to build the window, it's like all bleh. And I don't like that. It frustrates me. Bleh. Bleh frustrates okay. me. All right. All right. So I, when I get blood. Okay. Uh, we don't want you like uh, that. No blahs. No. Um, I had a lot of questions about the uh, square, the glass square. Apparently, people don't know um, about they don't probably the don't lip even have on a... the end of the oh, glassware. Okay. So I had a question come in uh, from one of the shorts where, uh, actually, I had like two or three of them. Okay. Uh, well, we use a square all the time. So you, you <coughs> It's imperative, I think. So I'm going to, sh- I guess we're going to switch over and we're yes. going to talk about, let's talk about squares first before we switch over to camera number two there, Barb. Okay. You tell me when you're ready and I'll do it. Okay. So squares, y'all. Squares are uh, really in, in the glass industry are imperative because, uh, well, number one, if you just use straight edges, you're going to have to use your little, 
your uh, your little helper and clip it on the glass and, and mark your glass every time you cut it. But with a square, if you take the time as soon as you get it, take it out of the box, and uh, most squares are adjustable. The three squares I'm getting ready to share with y'all are all made by Lepinette, and we use them all here in the studio, and they range in different prices. They range from $12 up to about $38. And you're going to find that these will change your life when you're cutting glass and make things a lot easier, okay? All right, Barb, let's switch over to camera two, please. Okay. Okay, so this is, this is the first square that I'm gonna share with you, okay? So I want you to, to see, you see this edge right here? All right, that's my index finger running up against that. That edge, pulls that square square to the glass okay and when you're when you're cutting your glass I like to put my thumb on the bottom let me get up here a little bit closer put my thumb on the bottom down here hold my square with my finger pull listen to your glass cutter everybody And then get your running pliers. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this because my square, I got this piece of glass intentionally from the back because this side is all cattywampus and wiggly wobbly. Okay, what I did is I took my square and now I squared that up, and you you can see the edges are kind of goofy. And this one here is squared. And now this is square now. Both of these edges, all four of these edges are square now, okay? So this square works really well. Let me move my other squares because this is the short one. This is the 12-inch square here that we're sharing with you right now. This is the 12-inch studio square with the lip. See that? That lip catches right there. And... And you can you can pull the glass back to you like that, and, okay? It's great for borders. And you can just okay. Now we just okay. So when you have that square, man, you can rock on cutting glass. You can rock on cutting strips, all that stuff. Now this is just your twelve inch studio square so now we're going to share with you this one okay this is our 18 inch lepinette square does the same thing it's got that nice lip across it see that lip let me show it to you see that it sits right there just like that. So when you when you pull this square up to the edge of the glass, it's going to tell you a lot of things cuz this square is square. And there's nothing worse than cutting a piece of glass. If it starts at a square without a square, you're going to continue to keep it at a square. It'll never be square for you. So, this is the little this is the little 18-inch square here by Lepinette. Now I'm going to share this one with you. This is our, this is the 24 inch, okay? And it has the same. They, they can't see it because it's. Well, look. it's so big. Let's yeah, let flip me up go to the other me. channel there. Okay. I don't know if it. Yeah, sure. Okay, so there you go. This is the 24 inch square. See, it says back on it. That means it goes back in the glass studio <laughs> when we're done with it. So 24 inch Lepinette square. This is a great square for those of you that work with half sheets or, uh, or smaller than that. I've got, these, these are just three because the producer and I were joking on the way up front when I had these three in my hand about how many squares Ed really does have. And not only do I have squares, but my, some of my straight edges are over 10 feet long. So, um, you know, I guess I could have brought one of those up here, but you wouldn't have even been able to see it hardly. So anyway, 
If you don't have a square, go to our channel and shop the and Amazon store. the Amazon store and get you a square. It's just like the rheostat, y'all. It'll change your life. If you don't have one of these in your studio now, you need one. Yeah, really. Or you need two or three. They're not that expensive. Santa's coming to town. And, you know, go ahead and get these because, again, y'all, if you're using the right tools, your work is going to be, you're going to produce much prettier work. That's for sure. So I want to share, you know, this piece of glass that I cut. This was, this is an old piece of spectrum. It's a 327 2. So I'm sure Oceanside probably still makes it, but this is really a beautiful, a beautiful green glass. But the reason I wanted to share this glass with you is because a lot of you have trouble cutting dense opalescent glasses. And the reason you have that, you're like, Ed, why can't I hear my cutter? Why? You know, I'm, the reason you can't is this green is mixed with white. And if you look at the edge of your glass, right here, the edge of your glass, I know, you're probably wondering how come I didn't get cut on that. But when you look at the edge of the glass, you're going to see it's, the colors are stacked, and that's the way they mix them. They roll green out, they bring a ladle of white over, and then the guy that's mixing the stuff really knows his job, and he makes beautiful glass. But the reason you can't hear this half the time... Well, let me change. Okay. As, Go. <laughs> so we're going to, so listen to my glass cutter and I'm going to start down here because I'm going to flip it over. You want to move up a little bit. There you go. And your running pliers are only going to run the glass so far. Okay. And I left the label on there. That's why it's not coming apart. But anyway, so when you have different, anytime you have white stacked up in any color, a lot of times when you're listening to your glass cutter, it this noise may just disappear. And then again, it may not. Okay? But the reason that you have trouble or you don't hear your cutter and you think you need to change... The pressure in your cutter is because of the white, and white is a very stiff glass. So any of your glasses that have white th through them, most of the time when you catch a piece of white, it's going to act differently to the tone. So here we go, one more time. And we're finishing up on this end, so there's where we're running it from. So just a little bit of, again, listen to your glass cutter. Your glass cutter will tell you a lot of things, okay? It will tell you a lot of things. So what we're going to do now, and if you don't have a square, y'all, please get one for your studio. Again, it will change the way you cut glass. And your glass will look a lot better, and your edges are going to look a lot better just by using a very simple square and and the, and it's easier when you're doing borders oh so gosh it, when you're it, cutting it'll save you an enormous amount of time borders boxes mm. Mm -hmm. any of the b words in your studio that square will work so guess this piece of glass right here behind us Shelly. this is another piece of glass that's going into the uh the Merle's Inlet Project. That's what we're going to call it, the Merle's Inlet Project. Okay. okay. All right. So this is going into the Merle's Inlet Project. This is an Armstrong. Again, <laughs> yeah. This piece of glass was made in 1982. Okay. So um, I'm sharing that with you. It's an Armstrong. The part number is A2401. And it is really, it is, and this is a, and it's a IS, which is a iridized, streaky glass it's really pretty this is going to be part of uh, some reflections on the waters that we're using so anyway we just wanted to share that with you and then we want to share a little project that we're finishing up with you um, with some blown glass and uh, so this is a project that's going to a house down in georgetown 
And um, so we wanted to share this with you. I'm going to bring this up to you. Okay. Okay, so these, this is a little, this is just a little, little eight inch, what we call an eight inch orb. Mm-hmm. These, this is an eight inch orb. And so what I call it's this is an 87 with a 41 on it. And the 41 being the cobalt blue and the 87 being this really pretty uh, water blue glass. So I wanted to share that with you. So our These customer. These were in some of the shorts that were out. Yeah, for so some last of the shorts. I believe. Yeah, so the shorts. If you've been, how we made if them. you've been watching the shorts that Barb's been tuning turning on for you, you'll see these being made. Okay, so you'll see that orb, and then I want to share this with you. Okay, these are one of our most these are our most popular sale items for people's yards. And you ready? Here we go. Watch this. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. My. I'm ready. I've been ready. Okay. So this is cobalt blue on the oh, that's bottom. That's your saber. White. And we always put that ball on the end right there. We want that ball on the end, okay? Because it just makes this piece. So imagine lighting in that. So this will have, uh, they use a uh, solar pad that illuminates this there's a stake that goes in the ground this goes over top of the stake and then you illuminate it so this customer particular customer is getting two of these and three of the orbs for her garden at her home uh, for the holidays so we're really happy about finishing up her project we're even more grateful for the order and so those reeds are available in any color and in three different uh, three different lengths, right, Barb? 24 to 32, 34 uh, to lengths. 42. Yeah. yeah. So they kind of vary, but they're all so pretty when they're completed. So um, I hope that uh, that just gave you, makes you smile a little bit because uh, it made me smile while we were making it. I was having fun. Uh, Tom wants to know where you're getting all this Armstrong glass since it's not being made anymore. Uh, I have a, I had a friend that had a bunch of it and um, oddly enough, Tom, that he had the colors that we really needed for this Merle's Inlet project. So I tried to buy as much he of it as a, I could. He had a stash of beautiful glass. Beautiful that glass. He and we've been a, friends for 40 years, like, so... He's got more beautiful glass, and but that's his, he's not selling that. He's just selling us this beautiful. You know, he's got a yeah. huge stash. There. So for this Merle's Inlet project, let's just let's just say we bought four hundred and forty square feet of sheet glass. So it's really it's pretty stuff, and it's really pretty. And I'm sharing it with y'all. I know it's not being made, and and it's crazy to share something with you that you can't get a hold of. But you know, there's people out there that still do have some of the Armstrong. It's like there's not too many people out there that have Chicago art glass, but I've got a bunch of it. I've got some Chicago art glass that's absolutely gorgeous uh, in the back. And I'm going to be sharing my not only my Armstrong, Tom, I'm going to be sharing my Kokomo, my Wismac, my Oceana, my Yakagani. I'm sharing all of the glass for the Merle's Inlet project with you guys every week, there's a different sheet going to be up there. Now these sheets are coming up big now because that's why they have to go in the window. So I'm not showing you Armstrong to, to tease you because I know you can't get it. I'm showing you the Armstrong to show you what used to be out there. Word, word. And there, and okay, but word. There's comparable glass. Yeah, there's there. comparable glass. Wismac makes it. Bullseye. Bullseye makes it. But I want you to know, too, that Wismac, I believe, is probably going to start making Armstrong. Did I that's what that's I heard. What, is that what we heard? Yeah, I heard that that because, I mean, they have the recipes. Armstrong has their recipes and everything. Some of them. That yeah, they're just not going to do the big warehouse thing. So. They're not going to do anything that is the same as what Wismac, because Wismac and Armstrong had some of the same kinds of Similar glass, glasses. Similar yeah. glasses. But, hey, y'all, if... If Wismac is going to be rolling the colors for them and annealing their glass, get your socks on because it's going to be great. 
Wismac has a beautiful process for annealing their get glass. Get your socks off and run to Wismac. <laughs> get your socks on and run to Wismac and get you some good glass, y'all. Okay. So, uh, but or anyway, sunshine. Go to sunshine. Yeah, sunshine. The sunshine carries Wismac glass, and uh, and also they carry Kokomo. The, you know, the dilemma is that everybody's inventory got used up during the pandemic. And now everybody's playing catch up. You know, uh, Kokomo had a tornado uh, during the pandemic and it wiped out part of the warehouse back there in one of the furnaces. So, you know, they're just getting back up and running. And it's really hard, you know, to, to I can imagine on that scale, Barb, what we do on such a small scale compared to what they do. Definitely. Okay, Burnt Raw Toast said, since you do a showcase every month of the really talented work people submit, have you thought about doing a showcase of people first starting out? Um, you know what? I think it's a great idea. And if you people that are just starting out have some of your work you'd like to share with us, please send it to... Go to the website. Go to the RDRV. Go to ConwayGlass.com. RDRV, right up here at the top, and you'll see, submit a question. Just send me an email, and I'll send you the link where you need to send uh, the photos to. And we absolutely do uh, showcase beginners. Just let us know that you're a beginner, and we will absolutely do that. And we have sure. in the past. Yeah, we have we, in the past. We, we yeah. showcase everyone. We don't just single everybody out. If you yeah. send us your if work, you send us the it's work. going up on the screen yes. for you. So. So send so your work in. Be loud and be proud of your new work. And, you know, if you're... This is a very supportive community. Yes. And if you need us to critique, we can critique. But if you just want us to show, see yeah. your work, we're happy to show it. And we're happy to share your work with everyone else. Yeah. You know, because everybody's technique and everybody's has different talents. You know, so uh, being able to share work with everyone in our community, which is a very... A very great, I, I consider our glass community just uh, one of a kind, actually, because there's so many special people here. And everybody uh, helps each other, I think. So, you know, we're not just the only ones that are helping you. I hope we're helping you. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, Tom. Something's out of stock, and I guess I missed the, um, the link there. Yeah. Uh, um, th send me that part number on the Kokomo, because I might have it, Tom. Oh, is that what you're looking for, Kokomo? Yeah, it's Kokomo. He was at Kokomo Opalescent Glass. Looking for glass. Okay, they're out of stock. Okay. If you have a part number, Tom, let me know it because uh, uh, it's very possible. Or just, or just uh, send me a, send me a picture of it. Uh, Karen was having a problem with her picture, and I think it might be you, Karen, because I don't see anyone else say they have a problem. I can't see a problem. Um, I don't know. I think we're okay. Maybe reset I think we're your... okay. Yeah, reset things. So, uh, well, it's okay. good to have everybody show up tonight. Yeah. I want to thank There's everybody. A lot of people here. And again, you know, you guys, you guys know if 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 you want to help support the RDRV channel, you can always just click in and and uh, do us a, you know, a super chat or a, or a, just a super thanks is good or uh, just. Give us know, a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up like because this. you know what? You could like us. That's right because you know the thumb is our favorite finger. Yeah. There's nine other ones or eight <laughs> other ones, but the thumb is our favorite. Stick with the thumb. Stick okay. with the thumb. That's right. Okay. Um, and you know, subscribe and follow us. And yeah, and watch don't forget our playlist. Our, our sponsor of tonight's show is Sunshine Glassworks. And they're digging themselves out of some really bad lake effect snow today. But I'm sure they'll be open and rocking because that's what they do. Okay. If you have a question, just put it in the chat and uh, put a cue in front of it. And we'll be happy to answer it. Did you have a um, anything else tonight that you wanted to showcase? No, we got the squares. About? And we were talking about cutting opalescent glass again. And, okay. Uh, so you guys ready for Thanksgiving? And I hope everybody's ready for Thanksgiving. We have the whole family coming in, and that's, um, gosh, <laughs> when I think about it, I get excited. Just uh, having the whole family together for uh, for even just a couple of days is really good. Yeah, 
and cleaning the house up and trying to train the puppy. Yeah, you know, Miss Mary, <laughs> she's doing really well. Actually, she's doing great, I think. And um, so... Okay. So she's somewhere between one and five. Yeah, we found that out. We thought she was a puppy. He said she might be uh, she, five. Yeah, she might be five, but she could be three. She acts like she's one. She acts like she's like, yeah, she's one. Uh, she's still got a lot of puppy in her. She's got and, a lot to learn. Yeah. Uh, Jen wants to know, do you have any recommendations on how to start getting commission work? Well, first of all, build some work and have it where people can see it. So if you don't have your own studio, you might want to you might want to do some consignment work or uh, me. I prefer just to sell it to them, and then you don't have to worry about running all over town trying to find your money every month. So, but if you, once you get your name out there, you know, doing commission work and starting your own business that's a totally different. Thank you, Thomas. Th thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. We Thomas. appreciate You're awesome. you so much. And uh, so, and all know, the help you give everyone on the channel as yeah. well. Thank you. And you know, and Thomas is our woodworker. So, uh, if but you have any questions if, on to that, to get commission work, you know, and you're trying to start your own business, first of all, yeah, get into a gallery or something where somebody's going to show your work for you and sell it for you. And, uh, you know, eventually the commissions will come, but it, you have to have, be able to offer your customer something. So if you don't have a studio, you're working out of your house, get into a gallery where they'll sell your work and somebody will ask about you. You can put your cards out there and, you know, going into business for yourself is a huge step. Most of you out there, I'm not telling you something that you don't already know, especially in this volatile kind of atmosphere that we're all living in right now uh so you know we've been in business we're very fortunate we've been in business for 38 years and my our first stained glass commission was actually the guy that wanted our insurance business for the company so think about that okay you're gonna need insurance and your your insurance guy might need a stained glass window um jen <laughs> one thing you might think about doing is putting uh stained glass in your own front door Maybe above your door, transom with the number of your house on it. Hanging on your back porch, you know. Something where your neighbors can see it. Because sometimes your first customer is your neighbor. There's a guy right or, next door. Yeah. And so, you know, just tell people what you do. Talk about it. and um, Go to little craft fairs. Uh, if you have a little craft fair in, in your neighborhood, show up there with your craft. You know, uh, show up. Don't, don't show up at a yard sale with your craft because that's not what you're trying to promote. But what you want to do is, is if you have like a little art fair, your neighborhood, your HOA might have a little thing down by the pool, by the pool house, and you could do that. So um, we just want, commission work is like, is really hard to get. But if you'll, like Barbara said, dress up your front entryway with your work. You know, dress up, dress up a lot of areas thank around. Thank you, Nina. Uh, thank you, Nina. Dress up a lot of areas around your home, and so that people can ask questions. And if you're out in your studio, let's just say your studio is in the garage, and it's a pretty day out. Open the garage door so people that are walking by can see you working. Uh, yeah, there's there's hundreds of ways to to start promoting yourself. And, you know, maybe we should do, uh, maybe not a video, maybe a short video on different ways to promote your work and, and get... Well, we could do that because, you know, it, it wasn't easy for us. It wasn't easy for us at all. And... Uh, okay, so um, we could talk... I could talk all day about how to get commissions because that's the... Sales is my thing. Uh, Brandon wanted to know, uh, no, Brandon wanted to thank you for being so passionate about getting a rheostat. His soldering has improved greatly. Thank you again. Brandon. Um. Two thumbs up for you, my friend, and thank you for the compliment. Thank you, Nina, for that. And, uh, also, uh, 
she wants to know if we have a picture of the blown glass piece we were showing earlier. And I haven't photographed it we yet. We haven't photographed it yet because we still have to finish the bottom, but we'll photograph all five it pieces. It needs to be photographed ready. before it leaves. Yeah. I have a photograph of something similar, and I'll try to find that. And if I do, I'll post it on the community page. It's very similar to that. The one that's in the backyard? Yeah. Okay, I have that on my phone. Oh, well, send it to me. I will. Okay. I'll send it to you. So, okay. yeah, so these pieces are really, and we do them in all different colors. Uh, they are they are uh, weather friendly because there's nowhere for water to get in them. So they're not, even in the great white north, they're not going to freeze and break. So glass is very, very durable, y'all. But that's a very nice uh, comment, Brandon, and it's greatly appreciated. And I'm glad that the rheostat works for you. It's a very small investment to, that changes your work dramatically. And let's see, there was another question. Oh, why is it called Conway Glass? Well, we just happen to live here, and our okay, beautiful Conway. community is Conway, South Carolina. So um, here's the thing about, about tagging the name of your community and registering it with the uh, Secretary of State. Nobody else can use it. And for the last 38 years, and for the rest of our lives, we own Conway Glass. So, um, you know, once you capture that name and you get that phone number and everything, nobody can take it away from you. So think hard about what you're going to think name hard about what you're going to name your company. Okay, because back in the 40s and 50s here in Conway was a company called Conway Glass and Mirror, and that was owned by. By a couple of characters, I won't mention their names, but they're all all really good guys, and they're all good friends of ours. But anyway, they uh, when we first opened our business, they contacted us and wanted to know if we wanted to purchase Conway Glass and Mirror, and I was like, why? I own Conway Glass Incorporated. Guess what? They still have Conway Glass and Mirror, but they don't do anything with it. And now I own Conway Glass. And I own that phone number that we've I had for thirty. Well, Barbara owns Conway Glass. <laughs> no, I own Conway Glass. We both own it. Hello? We both own it. Hello. Okay, Jen has a question. I have a digital temperature controlled soldering gun. What's the ideal temp usually for sixty forty solder in Celsius? Is it a soldering or gun or is it a soldering iron? iron. Just go ahead and answer that before we answer your question. Is it a soldering gun or a soldering iron, please? And I don't know. Am I missing Crickets. a question? No. <laughs> am I missing a question or something? I feel like I hope I not. might be missing something. Okay. I hope not. But if you have a question, just... Uh... Yeah. So, so what is, if it's a soldering iron... Um, the temperature you're going to run that soldering iron at Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, the temperature I'm going to run the soldering iron at Fahrenheit is 515 degrees. And in Celsius, that would be... Uh, uh, I you have to do the math, but it's like 279 or something Celsius. But you can, there's a chart. There's a chart you can use it, and, and we... Yeah, we do Fahrenheit. 515 Fahrenheit is what I work at. Uh, with my rheostat attached to my iron, attached to my hand. A soldering iron, there's a difference between a soldering iron and a soldering gun. So James sure there is. Not. Soldering guns are designed to use for electronics. And soldering irons are... They have a little tip, uh, right? Yeah, and a little pointed tip. They have a light in them and they look like a gun. Soldering iron is handheld and won't require it because you have a digital controller. You don't need another rheostat. That is your controller. But a soldering iron, a, a soldering gun is basically used for electronics, y'all. So um, if you have a soldering iron, then you need to be working at a temperature. If you're using a rheostat, you need to be working at about a number seven and a half. Or if you're using a digital controller, 515 degrees is, is fine. Because that'll melt your 6040. It'll keep your, t your copper foil tape from lifting up. 
and it won't leave you a bunch of trash and boil your solder. So, uh, I mean, boil your flux. Don't please don't put so much flux on there that you boil it. Okay, I did miss a question. Where is the community page? The community page is when you go to the RDRV Glass Studio YouTube channel page. There are some little headlines across the top. It'll it'll say uh, uh, playlist videos. If you if you go all the way to the right, I think it's all the way to the right. It'll say community, and you just click on that, and it'll have some community posts. And that's how I uh, send messages to y'all um, throughout the. You know, usually just once or twice a week. Right. Something that's coming up, or something we want to share with you. A picture of my dog, or. His dog. Or our dog. Our dog. <laughs> Her company. My company and his company too. But that's where I communicate with you guys. But you know what? You Tonight, and, and we're in, I'm sorry, we're, we're in great company. Tonight. We are in great company. I just thought I'd throw that in there for y'all because <laughs> y'all are great company tonight. Thank you. Moose stew. Uh, Rochelle Otterize just finished moose stew dinner. Moose. Oh, God, that sounds good. That sounds like your kind of meal. It does. It does. Okay. Hi, Magali. Hi, Karen. I didn't get to say hello to a lot of people here. Kat St. Jane, Chris, all y'all that I missed saying hello to at the beginning that came in later. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all for coming coming out tonight and hanging out. Because I, I know everybody's busy because that turkey is thawing out in the I refrigerator. Know. And ours is thawing out. Ours is almost thawed. I looked at it. Today it's not all the way thawed, but it's getting there. It'll be it'll be ready. We'll come pick. We'll come. We'll drive to the shop Thanksgiving morning early, and grab the turkey and take it home and get that bad boy ready for him. So I'll try to put that picture on the community page. Ed's going to cook the turkey Thursday morning early, and um, yeah, we got we have a twenty two point two pound turkey. Um, just because my. <laughs> Rochelle said it was a fresh kill. Oh, wow. So. Oh, that's good. That's good, Rochelle. Okay. Any suggestions on the best way to get light behind your sun catchers when you're doing a craft show? Um, mm. Wow, that's tough, Magali. You doing craft shows at night or, or during the day? Well, if you're daytime outside, you got a perfect situation. If you're inside... If you're inside for a craft show, then they make these little four-foot LED shop lights with one light bulb in them, and they can attach to your... And they got a little switch on the and side. And they got a little switch on the side. We have them in our, in our stained glass retail shop, and they actually, by adding those four lights in there, it lit up this glass blowing studio even much better and everything, didn't it? Huh? Mm -hmm. It just really did a good mm -hmm. job for us. So you might want to get one of those. and, and uh, Yeah, the LED got... shop lights are cheap. They're like $17 or something, Magali. Is it inside, Magali? Yeah, it must be inside. Otherwise, I'd just figure out where the sun is and hang them right there where the sun's coming up yeah. or going down or whatever. You might have to move stuff around during the day to keep the sun just perfect. But, uh, yeah, it's tricky, right? Yeah, it's tricky because you, you're not really sure what where to turn be, due to the sun. But one thing for sure, Magali, like you just said, it comes up in the east and it sets in the west. And believe it or not, the southern sky is the best light. So $400 is good, Magali. Really good. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds like you had a good day. Sounds like you, yeah, that's a good day, Magali. You kidding me? That's awesome. Okay, guys, we're going to go home and, and, uh. Yeah, Barbara made a, made a pork roast today before we left the house. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to go home and take it out of the Duncan Keep Fife Keep your fingers pot. crossed our puppy didn't eat the couch. Or the, or all the bread on the counter for making, uh, fresh. No, that's pushed to the back. Okay. But well, you know, she's almost six foot tall when she stands up. <laughs> it's ridiculous. She, she's a mess. <laughs> she's so cute, y'all. So, okay. Um, anyway, thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. And we want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Please be safe. 
And, uh, you know, if you're traveling, a lot of us are traveling this year, except us, we're not traveling. A lot of us are traveling this year. Just take your time. If, if you got to be at a certain time, leave a little bit early rather than going a little bit too fast. So I don't have to preach to you about that. Just be safe. safe we want to see you here next Monday night. So. Yes, yeah, safe travels. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, everybody. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you all. Happy Thanksgiving.